Okay, so the second thing I want to cover is something I do a lot, and that is where we have a smaller piece of felt that we're sewing onto the front of a larger piece of felt. Um, the way that I normally do this, and the, the stitch that I find the most attractive for this, is basically like a little whip stitch. So what you do is, again, I have my needle, and I have it threaded with a length of pearl cotton with a knot at the end, and I am just going to come up from the back, right where I want to be, and it's just through both layers, and I pull through, and then I like to go down right next to, so it's a complete straight line, to make a little stitch. I like the way this looks, and I use it a lot. It's very full guardy, and I really like the way it looks in my Christmas ornaments, which is what I'm generally doing. So then I take another stitch, and you can space these as far apart as you want, as close together as you want. Um, that's part of the creative input of it, but it's the same thing. We're just going to go directly across from where we took our stitch. So I have something that looks like that. Now in the corners, I tend not to go straight into the corner because I don't want to um, distort the corner at all. So what I'll do is I'll go, um, you know, diagonally in from the corner. And then I'll take a stitch on either side of the corner. So I pull through and back to the back. And then I can either um, come up on this side and be like right in the same spot. And again, this depends on how close together you're making your stitches. And you can do a corner like that. Or, now some of you are probably wondering why I don't do this all in one step. Because um, there are a lot of stitchers out there who would be perfectly fine, um, you know, going down here and then kind of just bending the work and popping back up where they want their next stitch to be. And you can certainly do that. Uh, I just find that I have a lot more control over it when I do it in two separate steps. So you do whatever works for you. For the sake of speed, I am just gonna zip this up and I'm gonna show you another alternative for the corner. So you can, you, know, you wanna kind of space your stitches out so you can see what you're doing. And in this case, I'm quite a ways from the corner. Um, so what I can do, if I want to put a stitch in the corner, for whatever reason, and sometimes you do for aesthetics, you can take a stitch right over the corner and you would just simply come up here and go down right at the corner and then take your next stitch, you know, equally from the corner as your one before. The biggest thing in doing this kind of work is the evenness of your stitches. You want to be as neat and as even as possible. That's what gives you the best look. You can get some cool effects, though, if you want to, depending on what you're sewing. Um, like here, this is a pretty small stitch, but if I wanted to do something decorative, I could take a couple stitches pretty close together and vary how far in they go. And I'm hoping you'll be able to see this with my pink thread on red. I probably should have done this in the reverse. So this one, I took a little bit bigger bite into the red felt, and then I'm gonna take yet a bigger bite. So you can do some cool like contouring kind of things, and you can do some cool shapes, and then I can, you know, kind of come back out and have this little triangular shape holding my piece together. Pardon my knot. You don't wanna to pull too hard on the felt either. What we're mainly using is a craft felt, so. Just be wary that you can um, run the risk of actually pulling through it. So with a little bit of planning, you can do this kind of thing and it can look really pretty and really neat. You don't want to come too close to the edges because then it's not really holding, but you can see I've got kind of this look going on. Um, you can also vary how close together you make your stitches. So if I wanted to do, I'm going to just zip over to the other side here. I could do a little bit deeper stitch. Than I normally do, and I can make some very close together. Now this is very effective if you're using um, a variegated yarn because then you're using more stitches so you can make this kind of almost satin stitch kind of look, and that'll really show off your variegated yarns very well. Um, so you see here I'm just doing these kind of stitches very close together, and bear with me because doing this through the video monitor of my cameras. A little bit more awkward um, but you can see see there I kind of didn't make them as equal as I would like now yeah, they're not bad um, but you can always go in too and then fill in say with a different color thread 
the possibilities are really endless, and this is really a very, very basic stitch. You don't have to know anything fancy to be able to do this. So there we go. Um, like I said, you could also go in and say, oh, well, I like that, but I think it needs a little bit extra. So I could come up in between where those two stitches would be, come through, and then go back down in between those two stitches. There's no real rhyme or reason because really, in all honesty, it doesn't take that many stitches to hold, you know, a piece on for a Christmas ornament. So 90% of what we're doing is purely decorative anyway. But you can play with it and you'll see that now I have this kind of long, short, long, short, long, short idea. And you could do this all in one step or you can come back, like I said, do it, do your short ones in one color and then come back and do your long ones in another color. Um, so once you got this sewn on all the way around, you would just have to tie a knot in the back. So, pardon my not neatest work, because like I said, I'm working from a camera, but you get the idea of the ways that you can um, kind of sew this on. And if you wanted to sew something on where you didn't necessarily see your stitches, which isn't something I do a lot with Christmas ornaments because I really want to see the stitches, you could simply sew this on using this little whip stitch technique, but use a sewing thread um, that matched your top piece, and then you wouldn't even notice it because the felt would just absorb um, your sewing thread. And then when you're done, you come along the back, and what I like to do is just take a stitch, and when I take that stitch, I'm just going through the green, and it's being hidden by the red on top. And then I'll just take another stitch in the same area. And that's all you really need to do. Um, if you're worried about it, you can take yet another stitch and tie a knot. Uh, sometimes I'll tie the knot, sometimes I won't. It just depends on where it is and if it's going to add bulk. If it's like in a small piece, then I won't tie a knot because you might see it even after it's stuffed. If you want to tie a knot, just kind of go through the loop and stitch it down and you're done. At that point, you can just flip off the thread like so. And you could sew, you know, I've done some Christmas ornaments that are birds and stuff, and this is how I would sew the top pieces, the wings, and um, things onto the bird. So that's a technique that you can use to um, sew your stitches on. It's the one I most commonly use is a simple little running, a uh, simple little whip stitch to put them together.